<clears throat> Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, nice humid day here in Adelaide. We've still got a lot of rain around at the moment and uh, expecting one thunderstorm at least today I think. But anyway, that's that's the way it goes in the summertime in Australia at times you get that. Today I thought I would share with you some of my thoughts, reflections on when I worked as a wedding stringer. Many people um, starting out in photography, they get interested in weddings if they're game enough to take them on. And uh, how do they start? Where do they get some help from? Who can teach them? Well, my uh, segue into wedding photography was through doing a few weddings for family and friends strictly as an amateur. Then I got better at it. And the film lab that I was um, getting my photography processed at, they actually were owned by a couple who had a, a portrait studio as well. And they had a number of wedding photographers working for them in what they called as stringers. People who just were, you know, had day jobs, but they were part timers on the weekend doing weddings for them. I don't think any of them were doing it full time. Anyway, uh, some way or another, I got in touch with the... Um, the owners of the portrait studio and the film lab and uh, approached them about maybe doing some work for them. I don't know whether I approached them or they approached me, I can't remember now. Anyway, they took me on board and that was really a great experience. And uh, it was it was very interesting because that was in the days of film and uh, they weren't doing high-end weddings, like people charge money for weddings these days. Uh, and they were doing on 35mm film mainly. Some of the photographers, there was about five photographers maybe attached to them. Uh, some of them were doing a little bit of medium format work, which I didn't have that equipment. But uh, So basically I was doing 35mm for them. And uh, the interesting thing was that was um, a steep learning curve in some ways because when I did a wedding for myself, I usually bought uh, one or two more rolls of film than what the wedding studio was, um, the portrait studio was supplying me. They would give me four rolls of film to shoot a wedding, four lots of 36. Think of how many, how uh, economical you've got to be on your shot selection when you're doing a wedding like that. And it was uh, pretty challenging. And sometimes I'd say, oh, I think I might need an extra film uh, to, to do that one. And they'd say, oh, OK, well, we'll give you an extra one, but only use it if you have to. <laughs> so I'd sometimes have five rolls of film and um, so that was that was challenging the other thing that I learned from them which was really as uh, stay with me forever and I've taught it to lots of other people and you'll find on my blogs and maybe on this YouTube channel is that they used to work with a timetable and when they gave me this timetable I'd never seen anything like that and I thought this is amazing this is really good it was all worked out what I had to do and I just carried on with that when I kept going for myself now the studio offered to let me um, do my own work. If I got work um, coming in to me from relatives or word of mouth, uh, provided it wasn't clashing with what they were doing, I could do that. And, and on the other times, I would do their weddings. So it was quite good. In fact, when, I, um, when they stopped uh, doing, I think they stopped doing the weddings at one stage, and when I was about to go redundant, and I went full time into wedding photography, and they... Um, well, maybe, maybe I hadn't actually left my job then, but they uh, said that we will send all our referrals on to you. And that didn't work because I was working during the day and I couldn't field the phone calls. We didn't have things like email where you could send contacts and all that sort of stuff in those days. <clears throat> but I did get lots of referrals. However, it was a great experience um, and uh, I'm not sure uh, what the current status of uh, Michael and Jenny Downing. It was Michael Downing Photographics. And uh, they had a, uh, a film lab in the Castle Plaza shopping centre at Edwardstown, not far from where I live, which was very convenient, of course. One of the good things was that um, Jenny, who, who ran the studio, uh, was something of a mentor to me. She would send me little notes. I'll show a couple of them to you in a minute. And uh, after I'd done the wedding, she would uh, ring me up or send me a note to say, oh, this wedding's really good or whatever, and send me a cheque. I noticed that I th think I got paid um, $100 a wedding to start with, and then it got up to about $120, so there you go. It was big money. Um, it wasn't actually, but I didn't mind because I was learning heaps. And uh, some of the good things were that um, uh, 
one night in particular they had to get together of their photographers. There was about four or five of us, plus Jenny and Michael, I think, and we had a powwow about what we were doing and how we were going about it. And one of the girls there, <coughs> I think it might have been Ruth, Ruth Ridley, and I'll talk about her in a minute. Ruth said, is anyone else, well, might, maybe it wasn't her, I don't know. Anyway, someone said, isn't anyone else shooting flash, bouncing it off the ceiling? And I thought, oh, never heard of such a thing. And uh, so they talked a bit about that, and then I incorporated that into my wedding photography and all my photography, and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, even when I've taught wedding photography to other people, one guy in particular who's quite successful, he said that's the best thing he ever heard on my wedding course that I did, bouncing the flash off the ceiling. So there you go. Getting back to Ruth, <coughs> she was, um, I mean, there was probably, what was she? there might have been two females and about three of us were males, I think. But Ruth was a very accomplished wedding photographer, very skillful, all the, the right personality to do that sort of work. And I was offered the opportunity to go with her on a wedding that she was shooting uh, by the studio to just to see how she went about it and pick up some tips. And I found that uh, exhilarating, really, <laughs> really quite quite a, a, a useful, helpful thing to do. <clears throat> the thing I noticed the most about that, and I'll come back to that in a minute, was that if you're a female photographer as against a male photographer, you have different ways just because of your sex, of developing rapport with the bride uh, in a way that most of us males can't really do it. And uh, that really came through strongly to me and just uh, the quiet, calm, professional manner she went about things and the skills that she had. It was, was a fantastic learning experience for me. And in fact, some years later, I did an interview with her on, on a VHS tape, just asking her thoughts on wedding photography, which I still have here somewhere don't know where she is now. She got married and moved overseas. So getting back to some of the stuff, I've developed a course in wedding photography over the years. Whoops, I'm just dropping stuff everywhere here. And uh, and I still teach this occasionally to people. I'm still dropping things. Wait a minute. Oh. And um, developed a course in wedding photography and occasionally people come to me and I teach this to them. And uh, over the years, I've probably taught over 100 people wedding photography, sometimes working for an organization and sometimes just for myself. And, uh, and some of them have gone on to be quite successful full-time professional photographers. So this is a manual that I developed with all my training material in it. And, uh, but one of the things that I was talking about, the fact of a female photographer, there's an article in here, <coughs> excuse me. I'll show you some paperwork in a minute as to what I did. I'll, I'll talk about in a minute as to how I um, set up a little contract for people to come and do my wedding course. So this, this article here was in a, um, an Australian photography magazine and it was uh, all about a woman's touch photographing a wedding. And I found it a very good article, and this was Anne, Anna Brennan. Uh, she said, photographing weddings is a combination of emotion with techniques plus an eye for the little things. And this is really talking about um, uh, the, the unique way, which is what I was alluding to, that I found Ruth doing, approaching the special day in stockinged feet. I don't know whether people still wear stockings. Maybe they do. <laughs> anyway, but that was a really good article, and, and whenever I was teaching my photography class, my wedding photography class, if I had females there, I would show them that article and show everyone that one actually. Um, I'll just find what I used to do. I had it here a minute ago. Maybe I'll come back to that in a minute. All the paperwork, all the planning, the objectives. Um, this is just a sample. With my when I'm training my courses, I would also do the um, I do these sort of proof sheets of my weddings and, and go through these when we were uh, uh, 
between the course and I'd show them on the screen as well. I'll just show you, which is my, probably one of my favourite ever wedding photos that I've ever taken in a minute, if I can find that. I'm hopeless, aren't I, at finding things? This one here. This was uh, over on the east coast of Australia and it was an infinity pool and the couple were doing the um, uh, the bridal waltz, so to speak, sort of. And uh, anyway, they um, I noticed I was standing there taking photos of them as they were dancing and I noticed gradually they started taking things out of their pockets and everything and suddenly they took this gigantic leap into the pool and I got it just at the right moment. And then I didn't stop shooting, I kept shooting shots afterwards as, as they were in the pool as well. So that's a very memorable occasion. So I'll just show you the things that, this is where it was very encouraging working as a stringer. I don't know whether people still offer that these days, but if you can get some work uh, with a wedding photographer as an assistant, that's the way to go, in my opinion, before you actually go in at the deep end yourself. So uh, I'd get these little notes back from Michael Downing Photographics from Jenny in the mail, and uh, she'd say, thanks, Jeff, for Trudy and Robin's wedding on the 4th, whatever that date was. This is back in the night, late 1970s, early 80s, I suppose. Um, thanks, Jeff, for... I won't read out people's names for their wedding on the 9th of November. Have seen the wedding. It looks great. $120 I've written on there, so that's how much I got paid. And then, great job, Jeff, from another one. She you still haven't seen that one... There you are. Thanks, Jeff, for a great job for Jane and Tim's wedding on the 8th of June. Regards, Jenny. Jenny Downing Wedding Consultant. Now, they don't... They, they stopped doing that. They, they had a studio in the, in the suburbs in Adelaide, and then they moved up into their home. They set it up a home studio up in the hills, in Adelaide Hills at Stirling. And uh, it was a thoroughly um, enriching experience for me to work with them. And having someone like Jenny as a mentor she wasn't a photographer as such, but Michael certainly was a very accomplished professional uh, portrait photographer. He didn't do weddings himself. Uh, he might have once, but um, he mainly concentrated on portraits. But having people like that being able to mentor you along the way was just fantastic for me. So I used to give people the options. I, I won't bother to try and look through that. It would take too long <laughs> to find. I used to give people the options in their payments uh, when they come and did the course with me. I'd have a set fee, and back in those days I was charging about $500 for my wedding course um, if people came and did it with me, but I'd say, if you can't afford that, pay me whatever you can, and you can pay in instalments as well. And uh, that used to work well. I wasn't ever out to really, and, and these days I probably, if I was doing it, maybe I should charge that, but I don't, now I'm a retired person, I'm not trying to make money, I, I wouldn't charge that sort of money now for doing my course, even though it can be very helpful to people. So there you go, a little bit of my thoughts about working as a wedding stringer um, and, and how you get started in, in weddings. Um, you can ease yourself into wedding photography. You've got to become an accomplished photographer doing family photos and you know photos of your pets and in whatever organisations you're involved in. You've got to get very familiar with your camera and what it can do and how to use flash, how to do bounce flash off the ceiling. So, um, but you can get into wedding photography if someone's giving you all the right advice and the training and uh, can hold your hand along the way, you'd be surprised what you're really capable of. So there you go. That's a little bit of my thoughts about being a, um, a uh, wedding stringer. And uh, it was life-changing for me in many ways, even though I was on my way. I did a few weddings. I did about a dozen weddings before I ever started working for that studio. And... Uh, and it was really very helpful. So thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you next time.